The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Turn this thing around Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around I'm calling on the name That changes everything Yes Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. I pray God come, turn this thing around. God turn. Turn it around, God, turn it around. Call it on the name, it changes everything. Yeah. God, turn it around, God, turn it around, God, turn it around.
hear a beep. How's that? Is that good enough? <laughs> yeah. All right. I hear a heartbeat. All right. We hear the heartbeat. I hear the heartbeat. We're live. We are rolling. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome all of you here today. It's a beautiful day out there. We're coming into the end of the summer. Fall will be coming. That's a beautiful time of the year when you get to see all the leaves turning. It's always a nice thing if you can go on a drive up towards Michigan. And you can see all the leaves, all the different colors. But you see the splendor and the beauty of what God has created for Amen. us. Amen. It's all about us. It's everywhere around us. If we just open our eyes and our minds and our hearts and believe that this is God's creation. And I've said it in the last few weeks that everything we have, God has created it because everything that is made is made from God's earth. All of the raw materials and the minerals. Whatever we have, God has made it. Because without his resources that he's put in this earth, it would not exist. Amen. So man cannot say that I have built a world by all by ourselves. That's not true. Because without God's resources that he's provided to us in the earth, it would not be possible. Yes, amen. There's an old standing joke that says the scientist is going to create a human being. And God says, well, go right ahead. And the scientist runs over and is going to dig up some dirt out of the earth so he can create the whole beam. Whoa, the Lord says, wait a minute. You've got to get your own dirt. That's my dirt. <laughs> you didn't create that dirt. If you take that dirt and create that beam, you're using my resources to create whatever you're going to create. Man has no power like that. Only God does. Amen. Man may try to copy what God has created, but it will never be in the perfection that God has made. That's never. Right. Amen. Today's message is going to be about what we talked about before I went on vacation, belief, the Holy Spirit, acceptance, and stepping into the water. Now, it's kind of, uh, we're going to go back to where we were a couple weeks ago. We're going to revisit that scripture about the belief at the death of Lazarus. We're going to talk about some things that are in Jesus' calling. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and opening our hearts to let him in so that we can have more than head knowledge about what the pastor is saying. Yeah, I believe what you're saying. I believe what you're saying, but have you experienced it? How can you really know what I'm saying if you have not ever experienced it? You, you can put all the stuff on paper. You can do all the work. You can maybe see it to believe it, but until you've actually experienced what God has for us, how can you say, I really believe because mm -hmm. people will say, yeah, I believe what you're saying. You say, well, if you believe that God exists, if you believe Jesus died for us, if you believe it in your head, you really haven't experienced in your heart what he has for you. Mm -hmm. You're just telling me you believe it. You want to step into it. Well, I'm not ready for that part. I do believe that all those things that you say are true, but I'm not ready to come to terms that it's going to be in my life. I've had people tell me, even my own daughter has told me, well, Dad, you know, i got to clean myself up before I can come to church. But we can't clean ourselves up. No matter what we do, no matter how good we are as far as the world sees us, the picture that the world sees and their way of thinking that you're a good person versus what God believes it to be. We can't make ourselves clean enough. We can't change ourselves. Only God can make that change and that's when we accept Him as our Lord and Savior. And we accept that and he will do the changing. He will do the cleaning up. 
Yes. He will turn our lives around if we let him to another direction. Because we're going in the opposite direction that God wants us to go until we allow him to work in us. We can't get there. So no matter what we do, the change that we might make is temporary. The change that God makes is eternal. It's forever. Amen. So having said that, I'm going to read the devotional. We're going to expound a little bit on this. There's going to be a couple of them. And try to put that into relationship with what we believe and how we believe it. Do we believe it with our whole heart or do we believe it with head knowledge? Now think about that for a minute. God does the work. We just have to accept the gift. So Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today. We just pray, Lord, for a blessing and an anointing on this, Lord. And I know sometimes, Lord, in the lack of our preparedness, you can tell us, you know, you should have consulted me first. But that does not constitute an emergency on God's part because we're not prepared. But God is faithful to help us to get through that time. Lord, we just ask for a blessing today from this message. And Lord, we pray that it reaches each and every one of us in the way that it has to be. It might come to each one of us differently. A specific part in our lives, Lord, that we need to have changed or that we need to work on. But the only one who can help us make that change and make it stick is you, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. So we just ask for a blessing today on the service and this message, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, like I said, we're going to take a couple of these messages, devotionals, that the Lord has inspired someone else to write so that we can bring a message to each other. The message is not just for you, it's for me, it's for everyone, and everyone out there who's watching us today. Just pay attention to what God is saying. And it's, these words are encouraging. Wear my robe of righteousness with ease. So when he puts that robe of righteousness on you, don't try to shake it off. Relax. Accept it. We can't gain righteousness without him. But the Lord has custom made it for you. So each individual has a custom made robe. Like I said before, we are all specific to God. Each one of us has a specific pur purpose in life. None of us are the same. He didn't make us the same. It'd be a boring world if we were all the same. I have custom made it for you to cover you from head to toe. The price that I paid for this covering for you was astronomical. With my own blood, with his own blood, he died for us. He paid the price for our salvation. You could never purchase such a royal garment, no matter how hard you worked. Sometimes you forget that my righteousness is a gift. See, we don't have to do anything to get that gift. When Jesus died, that for us. It was a gift. And when you get a true gift from somebody, they give you a gift, they don't expect anything in return. That is a true gift. He went to the cross and died for us, expecting nothing in return. So it's like when we give a gift to somebody, if we don't get a gift back, and we expect that gift, and that's not a gift. Think about that for a minute. Well, I gave you this. What are you going to do for me? That's not a gift. A gift is something you give, and you expect nothing in return for it. Think about that for a minute. And that's what Jesus did for us. You could never purchase such a royal garment, no matter how hard you worked. 
sometimes you forget that my righteousness is a gift. And you are feel and you will feel ill at ease in your royal robe. The Lord weeps when he sees us squirming under the velvety fabric robe as if it were scratching itchy cloth. Sometimes we kind of, when things are going on with us, it gives us this robe of righteousness and we kind of, we're not feeling comfortable. We're doubting. We're just sitting there and it's like, what is this all about? I want you to trust me enough to realize that this is a privileged position in my kingdom. Relax in the folds of your magnificent robe. Keep your eyes on me as you practice walking in this garment of salvation. I think about that every day as we walk with the Lord. It's a daily thing. Every day is new for us. Every day is a new walk. Every single day. So we, he grows us daily. He doesn't throw it all on us at once. He treats us like babies. He feeds us a little bit at a time so we get mature enough that he can give us a little bit more. If you know, if you, you take on too much at one time, it's overwhelming. That's the same thing God does for us. He gives us a little bit each day, a little more, a little more wisdom, a little more understanding of what he expects of us and what he's going to do for us. Keep your eyes on me as you practice walking in this garment of salvation. When your behavior is unfitting for one in my kingdom, do not try to throw off the royal robe. Instead, throw off the unrighteousness behavior. So when we're getting tempted through the day, or we get discouraged, he doesn't want us to just walk away and say, well, I can't do this no more. And how do we do that? Well, we've got to call on the Lord. We've got to call on the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, help me get through this situation. I don't want to become discouraged. And it's been said by others, I have not served the Lord this many years to just walk away. God has not blessed me for these many years to have me walk away. He's educated me to give me wisdom and understanding to know that I can come to Him in regards to all situations in our lives. Because there are days for all of us that are discouraging and depressing. But He's the one we can turn to to help us get through that moment. And once we get past it, we can look back and say, you know, it really wasn't that bad. So if we dwell too much on that stuff and don't give it over to him, it can tear us down very badly. So he tells us, throw off the unrighteous behavior or thoughts or deeds that you might be tempted to do. And the only way we can do that, like I said, is just pray, Lord, please get me through this. Then you will be able to feel at ease in this glorious garment Enjoying the gift that I have fashioned for you individually before the foundation of the world was ever built. Because according to scripture, before the foundation of the world was ever laid, we were already there. He knew us before we were in our mother's womb, before we were born. He already knew us. This is what scripture tells us. And there again, part of believing what the word says. So if you look back at this part right here, it does come down to belief. Do you believe that you could have this royal garment of 
righteousness bestowed upon you? Do you believe that through the walk of the day, that through the trials and the hardships you go through, that God cannot help you get through that? Do you believe He can? I believe. I believe He can. And it's over here it says, to relax in my healing. God heals us in many ways. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We need to be healed in all those areas in our life. Relax in my healing. Holy Presence, allow me to transform you to this time alone with me. Paul tells us that we are transformed in the renewing of the mind. We become a new creature in Christ. We, are, we turn around from what we were. Never to go back. But only through the Holy Spirit can we accomplish this. Only through faith can we accomplish this. As your thoughts center more and more on me, trust and displace, in other words, get rid of your fear, or turn it over to him, your fear and your worries. But we're human. We're going to have fear. We're going to have worry. But he can help it to ease it, to make it less than what it really is. But again, dwelling on the things that tear us down and not giving it over to him puts a heavy burden on us because we can't get through this on our own. And when we're in situations like that, we have friends we turn to, to console, to talk to about it. Does that not help you a little bit when you can talk to somebody that you can trust? Take that worry or if you want to, you know, I'm going through this right now, I just need someone to talk to. And we have to admit, when we have someone we can trust, that we can vent on through our circumstances, that we can confide in, it makes it a little bit easier. So how much better will it be if you bring it over to the Lord, the one who knows all things and knows how to resolve all problems? Yes? I don't know if this really goes along with it, but when we were in Florida, our pastor's wife one day, me and her were talking because I was having a difficult time. And I was telling her some things, and she looked at me, and she says, Mary, I really don't understand, because I've never been through anything like that. And I'm so glad that you can go to God and give it to Him, mm -hmm. because God gives certain people certain things that they go through, mm -hmm. but not everybody gets the same thing. So when I talked to my friend, she couldn't understand. But going to the Lord, he could. Right. And he could give me the comfort that I needed at that time. But it was nice to talk to her, even though she couldn't understand. You know, so maybe you got a friend that could understand because she's went through it, but another person may not because God hasn't let them go through that through something else. Exactly. So he gives each one of us something to go through. But I'm so glad that, I guess the point I'm making, I'm so glad we can go to the Lord and give it to the Lord because he knows all of it. Right. And not just little bits and pieces. He knows everything. And that brings up another thing, you know. When we've been through something in our lives that's been overwhelming, uh, maybe near-death experiences, God, you might think, well, why did I have to go through that, Lord? Why did I have to go through that? But as time goes by, somebody else might be going through that same thing, exactly the same way. And God's going to put that person in your path because they will be able to relate exactly to what you're saying because they've already lived it. They've already been through it. And sometimes God puts those people in those positions in place for us. So, 
that's another another point. But God, He's the one that knows all about it. So again, as your thoughts center more and more on me, trust so that you can displace, get rid of the fear and the worry. Your mind is somewhat like a seesaw. Up and down, up and down. Well, we're all been there. We're all it happens to all of us. As you trust in me, goes up. Fear and worry automatically go down. Time spent with me not only increases your trust, it also helps to discern what is important and what is not. Sometimes we'll take something that's really not important and we'll just it'll just multiply and snowball. And at the end of the day you look back at that and say, that wasn't really important. Why not let it tear me up like that? Well sometimes we just have to sit back and really talk to the Lord, analyze what's going on, and see what should I be doing about this, and how much time should I waste of my life's time on this subject because time is something that we can never recover never you can lose money but you can make more money but if you lose time to endless worry you can't gain that time back it will never come back to you time once it passes is gone money again you can make more money you can build another house you can get another car, but you can't get time back. Time spent with me not only increases your trust, it also helps you discern what is important and what is not. Energy and time are precious. They are limited entities. Therefore, you need to use them wisely. Focusing on what truly is important. As you walk close to me, your mind should be filled with scripture. So every time we're walking and we have a situation, we need to refer to God's word. Or we just need to talk to God himself. Because we can't always maybe recall everything we've heard, but we know one thing, God is always listening to us. And we don't have to be around a bunch of people. We can go sit in a room all by ourselves and have a private conversation with God. And he appreciates that. Go in your own little area and talk to God. As you walk close to me, your mind should be filled with scripture. I will show you how to spend your time and your energy. For my word is a lamp unto your feet. You might think, well, what does that mean? Well, he's the light. He's going to light the way and the path that you should be going. Even in your darkest times, think about that for a minute. He still will have the light to show you the way. For my presence is a light unto your path. Amen? Amen. So these are things I believe that correlate with what we talked about a couple weeks ago. What do I believe? And why do I believe it? How do I know it's true? Sometimes that's a hard question to answer. I think a lot of times we know that it's true because the Spirit of God is in us. He's proven to us that this is the truth. And how can I demonstrate that to someone else who doesn't believe? Or says they believe, but has not yet wanted to take that step to open the door to let the Lord into their lives. A lot of that becomes example and life change. Someone that knew you years ago comes and sees you again and you think, well, you're not the same person you were. And you'll get that from a lot of people. You're not the same. You're right, I'm not. Jesus has changed my life. Mm -hmm. I am not that person anymore. Like Paul says, you become a new creature in Christ. When we repent, we give it over to the Lord willingly, you are not the same person. Amen. And sometimes it's a slow process. 
sometimes instantly. But mostly God walks us daily and grows us daily. Mm -hmm. So that is one way of truly showing that Christ is life changing forever. If we truly take that step. Pastor, I know and remember the exact time and what I was doing when I realized that I was no longer the old person that God had changed. Amen. And it was such, it was so overwhelming and such a beautiful feeling when I realized that I was no longer here but I was way up here with the Lord. And I don't even remember really the change. It just gradually happened. And all of a sudden, he left me realize I was no longer this Mary, that I was a Mary in Jesus Christ. And it was an amazing feeling. Now you think, that's just transformation, you know, and <laughs> This is how God works. <laughs> I just turned the page of my Bible to an area that I wasn't going to read. But it kind of goes along with what we're talking about. Changing lives. Mary's life-changing experience. Mine, yours. Turn me to Acts 9-9. This is where Saul was on the road to Damascus. Now Saul, you got to remember, Saul of Taurus is who he was, who became Paul. Now on the road to Damascus, Jesus struck him down. But Saul was so determined that what the Christians were doing was against God, Jesus came to him and transformed his life from a murderer of the Christians to a writer of the gospel. Now you got to tell me that's got to be the most amazing transformation in yes. the history of man. In chapter 9, that Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus. So that if he found anyone who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem to have them killed and try it. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly, now listen, suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, now this is the Lord speaking to Saul. Saul, Saul, why, why, why are you persecuting me? He's talking about Saul killing and persecuting the Christians, the believers in Christ. Now, you, now here's, here's the really unique thing. Saul, who was against the Christian faith, he knew right away who was talking to him. He knew right away. <laughs> In verse 5 of chapter 9, And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, Now that's Paul asking. Now here's our Saul was asking, Lord, so he knew who it was. He knew right away. And this is where Jesus transforms Saul of Taurus to Paul, one of his greatest disciples. One of the ones who wrote some of the best spiritual writings in the Bible. And he said, Who are you, Lord? And then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gourds. So he was, tre now Saul's trembling and astonished 
and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Now here's a persecutor of the Christians. The Lord struck him down on the road to Damascus. And Saul, right away, right away, he wants to serve him. There was no question. He knew who he was talking to and who was talking to him. It was like almost instantaneous. So Saul, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Now there is a transformation that's got to be the world's greatest that ever happened. A man who was killing and persecuting all the Christians in a moment, in just a moment, he was transformed to a servant of Christ. Now Saul was just not, he wasn't just anybody in the Jewish nation. He was one of the smartest men in the nation. One of the highest educated men in the world at that time. And you've got to believe that the Lord knew if he's that determined to persecute me, I need to go to him. I'm going to use him to edify me, to bring glory to the kingdom. But Saul knew right away that that was the Lord speaking to him without a doubt and changed him instantaneously and began to serve the Lord and serve others. Do you believe that? Do you believe that's true? Yes, amen. But this, I, that was not even in my, <laughs> my study for today. That wasn't even going to, I didn't even entertain that. Thought. I just opened it up and it fell right there. And I'm not saying you can just open your Bible and find scripture and live that day. But I'm just saying, that's how God works if he wanted to add this to today's message, I believe that. Sometimes God works miracles. I just want to, I just got to believe that. And then I'm going to go back again to the Lord a couple weeks ago. And in John, in chapter 11, verse 15, Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I, uh, just as Jesus is speaking, I am glad for your sake that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him, let us go to Lazarus that you may believe. Lazarus was raised from the dead for the glory of God so that they could witness for themselves the resurrection of the dead. Think about that for a minute. Do you believe that? In verse 23, Jesus said to her, Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to Jesus, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last days. Not thinking that Jesus was going to raise him right then and there from the dead. And there again, this was done for the purpose of the glory of God in the kingdom. And Jesus said to her, For I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whosoever lives And believes in me shall never die. And he asked her, Do you believe this? Do you believe this? I did a little, little extra work here, not much, but so the Greek word for believe in the New Testament is pronounced pistiu. 
It means more than just believing something in your head. More than believing something in your head. And you can also mean to entrust or to rely, to cling to, and believe it. We're going to go to Acts 27. And verse 25. Now this is Paul. Now he's getting ready to go see, see Caesar. Paul, who was Saul Taurus, is now Paul. Jesus changed his name to Paul from Saul Taurus. I'm going to go up a couple of verses up to 23. For there stood by me, this is Paul speaking, there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. Now Paul was saying, saying, do not, the angel is telling Paul, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. Now Caesar could put him to death for his crimes. God is protecting him. You have to read the whole story to get to death. But do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who shall who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for believe God that it will be just as it was told. Again, believe. And like we said, believing, it means more than just believing something in your head. It can also mean to entrust, to rely upon, to cling to. So believing something that you've seen, believing something you've heard, to truly believe in especially in the spiritual realm, until you've actually stepped in, let's say, into the water, you cannot know the comfort, the relaxing, the refreshingness of the water until you've actually stepped into it. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. I'm in the water telling you this is great, I feel fantastic, it's relaxing, it refreshing me. And the people on the shore or on the dock are saying, yeah, we believe you. Well, are you going to come in and experience it? Are you going to come in and really experience what I'm telling you? Uh, I believe everything you're saying, but right now that's just not for me. I don't want to get wet. I don't want to step into the water right now. That's the same thing in our spiritual life. We can believe everything we read. We can believe everything we hear, but until we actually step in and accept it to be the truth and accept Christ as our Savior, you can believe all you want in your head, but you'll never experience it spiritually in your soul, in your heart, until you say, okay, Lord, it's time for me. I accept what you're offering me. I'm going to step in to the water and enjoy the refreshment and the joy it brings me. But that's not to say that there won't be trials and tribulations, because there will be. Because now you're serving the Lord who the devil is against. And he's going to do everything he can to discourage you. But with your faith and believing and experiencing what God can do for you, you will be strong enough through prayer and staying close to God that you can get through this situation. That's my message for today. I want you to, those of us who are here, myself included, those of us who are viewing us today, I want you to try to really put that word belief into perspective. Because we believe in a lot of things. You know, we believe my car's going to start when I leave here. I believe I'm going to go home and some of the air conditioners are going to be running. That's head knowledge. You know. But our spiritual life is the utmost important thing in our lives. 
It'll help us get through anything. Amen? Anybody have any comments? Well, we're going to sing a couple songs. We're going to have an offering. We're going to praise God for what He's doing for us. And just thank Him for today. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. We're here today, but we can be gone tomorrow. Many years ago, I believe it was Tom Jones had a song and said, to live for today and to love for tomorrow is the wisdom of a fool because tomorrow is promised to no one. But the one thing about when you're walking with the Lord, you may leave this earth, but your life is not over. We have God's promise of eternal life with Him. And those who are with Him and walking with Him will be there with us. That's His promise. Do you believe that? Ask yourself, why do I believe that? Why do I believe that? I, sometimes I can't explain a lot of that. I know in my heart, I know through my life, personal experiences, that God is real, and I believe His Word is true. I believe what He says said. And if you look at everything that's going on in this world today, it goes right along with the book of Revelations. Everything is happening. Not all at once, but progressively, all the turmoil in the world, all the disasters, the natural disasters, those are the birth pains of Christ. He's calling out to the world, I am real. I am coming back. These are the signs that I'm showing you. This is giving you through my signs, the opportunity to realize and become a believer that these things have come to pass and I am truly coming. And if you want to spend eternity with me, now, today, this moment, not tomorrow, or the next day, you say, well, that's not for me today. Well, then you've made your decision already. Make the decision today to follow Christ, to be a child of God, to have eternal life. If you just look at what's going on in the world, if you think this isn't true, you can get your Bible out, read Revelations. The Bible prophesies everything that has ever been prophesied in this Bible has come to pass. Not happenstance, not maybe. Well, it was a little late. No, it was perfect and on time. There are no coincidences in God's Word. There's no gray areas. It's all black and white. There's no mistakes. It's all true. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the service. Thank you for this message. I pray, Lord, that it reaches many people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're going to sing some songs, have some praise and worship to God. And then we'll follow from there. Amen? Amen. Amen. Again, these are not our songs. We have not written them, but we're thankful for those who have who give us the privilege to sing them and bring praise and glory to God. Amen? Amen. 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 Oh, someone. 
you've got the sunlight coming through the windows, right? <laughs> oh, save it on the electricity bill. <laughs> yeah. I came in this morning, I just turned the back lights on, nobody was here. I stopped them lights on the sanctuary. Hey. Okay. I'm going to get fired, I know I am. No. <laughs> Thank you. 
none cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow in your presence. No mortal man would dare to stand before your throne, before the Holy One of Heaven. It's only by your blood, and it's only through your mercy.
no matter what the circumstance. Because when we do that, not only do we show God the love that He's put in us, but he also, we also show Him the love we have for others by extending the forgiveness and grace. And through that grace that you extend it to someone else, you may never know how they can change their lives. Maybe it's that what they're waiting for is to see something from you that says, yes, I have the love of Christ in me. And I want to extend it to you. Amen. Amen. sun 
came shining and I was strolling and the wheat fields waving and the dust clouds rolling and the fog was lifting a voice was chanting this land was made for you and me as I went walking I saw a sign there and on the sign trespassing but on the other side it didn't say nothing that side was made for you and me this land is your land this land is my land from california to the new york island from the redwood forest to the gulf stream water this land was made for you and me In the shadow of the steeple I saw my people By the relief office I've seen my people As they stood there hungry I stood there asking Is this land made for you and me? Nobody living can ever stop So if we're talking about uh, the need for a sleep study, the common symptoms that people come in for are, I'm tired of being tired, I've been told that I snore, I've been told that I hold my breath, etc. I wake up choking or gasping, there are ancillary symptoms that may come in. They may wake up with a dull morning headache, they may have reflux symptoms, may go to the restroom quite often at night without realizing that it indeed is induced by irregular breathing at night because there are some physiological mechanisms that lead to that. Some people may just simply not know that all this is happening because they are sleeping independently and they may have a symptom related to I cannot maintain sleep well. So sleep maintenance insomnia. Then there are individuals who actually are required to do these as part of their job requirements in order to be alert on the road. But these are the people that are usually evaluated in the clinic or by a provider whomsoever they meet and then they determine, okay, if the quality of your sleep is probably in question based on all that you've said, then you are the candidate to have a test. We basically uh, send a requisition to the sleep centers and then this patient arrives at the sleep center, generally speaking, on a planned day for about a 30 to 45 minute turnaround time where they are taught the basics of hookup with these pieces of equipment. The one that we use in Parkview essentially is a three-prong system in, in a home sleep study. So it measures a respiratory flow, a breath-by-breath -breath analysis of a person's breathing during sleep, for which they wear a cannula in their nose, which resembles an oxygen cannula that people wear when they walk around needing oxygen. And then you have a belt across the center of the chest. That belt is connected to a box. Essentially, the whole purpose of that is to detect any effort that the body would provide in the event that there is an irregular breathing. So the body participates in an effort as a, what we would indirectly call the struggle against a closed airway expression. So in that process, the body is going to generate an effort and that effort has to be picked up through chest excursions. The third piece of equipment that we ask a patient to wear is an oxygen monitor. And what that measures is the highs and the lows of the oxygen during the entire night. 
So it gives us the spread of the distribution of oxygen, when oxygen levels may go low, when oxygen levels remain high, and if they go from high to low, what is contributing, what's the extent of change, and thereby pairing it with events that may be contributing to change. In addition to it, we do get what we refer as snore sensors. It's not a snore microphone attached, but we pick up snoring when present. And we also are able to pick up an average heart rate on the patient. To get a decent amount of recording and valid data, it has been generally accepted to get at least a six hour period of time. And if they had to interrupt their test for any particular nature call related reasons or any independent reasons, that is fine. As long as it's not a prolonged interruption then they are taught how to restart the test. It's fairly simple. So once they return the equipment, then that information is then downloaded onto a central server. A technologist looks at the test. If it's determined to be valid enough to be taken to the next stage, which is scoring evaluation, they actually mark out the start time, end time, irregularities, and put all that together in a pre-built report. The next steps in the treatment are discussed. And uh, those treatment options could be something that we may have discussed before when they came into the clinic to anticipate, or it may be treatment options, even though they are discussed, the patient wants to validate if that's going to work for them. So depending on what it is, they're either set up on treatment and then asked to come back, or they may be coming into the clinic back to review the results and then determine which is the best pathway for them. If you do not feel well upon waking up, you feel tired, you feel foggy, you have a headache, you don't feel like I am tired of being tired sensation, that is not normal. You need to go and have yourself evaluated. At the end of the day, it may not be a sleep problem or it may be more than a sleep problem, but you need to have your sleep quality evaluated at that point. And uh, speak to your provider, speak to your doctor, speak to whomsoever that you see with the confidence that this can be evaluated. There are tools to evaluate it and there are tools also to offer treatment in many different ways which are much different than the years of the past. This land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the New York Island. From the redwood forest to the Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me As I was walking that ribbon of highway I saw above me that endless skyway I saw below me that golden valley This land was made for you and me I've roamed and rambled And I followed my footsteps To the sparkling sands of Her diamond deserts And all around me A voice was sounding This land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From California To the New York Island From the Redwood Forest To the Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me When the sun came shining And I was strolling And the wheat fields waving And the dust clouds rolling was lifting, a voice was chanting, this land was made for you and me. As I went walking, I saw a sign there, and on the sign it said no trespassing, but on the other side it didn't say nothing. That side was made for you and me. This land is your land, this land is my land From California to the New York Island From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me In the shadow of the steeple I saw my 
people, but I really far fills. I've seen my people as they stood there hungry. I stood there asking, Is this land made for you and me? Nobody living can ever stop me as I go walking. This land is your land, this land is my land From California to the New York Island From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me This land is your land, this land is my land California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. This land was made for you and me.
just come to you today. We just want to praise you, Lord, lift you up, give you all the glory, Lord, for all that goes on. Lord, we just ask for a blessing today as we leave this building. A blessing for those who have viewed us on the air. Be with them, Lord. Guide them. Strengthen them. Guide each one of us, Lord. Strengthen us. Let us be that example. Let us be the light, Lord. Let us be able to be believing the things in our hearts and our minds that it says in your word, Lord. That we believe it without doubt. We believe it is the truth, Lord. And the truth will prevail as does your light. We just ask for your blessing today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say. Can't keep this in. Gotta let it out. Gonna tell the whole world that your love is spinning me round and round. Yeah, it's turning me upside down. I can't believe the way you love me more than I can contain. I'm gonna turn around and give, give, give it away. Back up. The more we get together